Before we get into today's video, I just wanna give a shout out to my Patreon supporters, especially to Jay Sneed, who has been a faithful supporter for a while now. He is a recipient of the GGGG for June of 2020. which was the Arvalon 8 sci-fi terrain set. And for this month of June 2020, the GGGG is going to be this Alchemist building from Pascal Belvito, and it'll come fully painted as you see here. So check out my Patreon link below in the descriptions if you're interested in getting in on that action. So for the past week, I have been painting like crazy, trying to get all of the base set heroes and aliens finished and I was able to finish all of those. I think they turned out really well and because of all of the great texture and detail on them, it was relatively quick and easy to paint using contrast colors. Also, I spent some time creating some card holders. Check those out, links in the descriptions below on Thingiverse, free for you guys, as well as the terrain for both sides of the board for the base set. I used Microsoft 3D Builder in order to modify some available files that I found online to make both a wreck spaceship here on this side and then the other side of the board the bushes. If you haven't seen my video on how to use MS Builder, a super easy program to create STL files or modify them, go ahead and click here. But uh, I had a lot of fun. This is sort of my first time creating terrain as well as card holders. Make sure you download those for your personal use. This tutorial is broken up into three sections. In the first one, I am going to be showing you how to paint the alien minions. There's three different kinds and I came up with a paint scheme that I like and was able to paint them up relatively quickly. The second tutorial is with all of the heroes as well as the boss monsters. And then finally, I will wrap up with how to paint the terrain, the wreck spaceship, as well as the bushes. So here are the timestamps for each of the three sections in case you wanna skip ahead to one particular tutorial. After I play a couple more games, I will be coming out with a quick tutorial on how to play. So look forward to that. Make sure you like and subscribe so that you know when that comes out. But let's go ahead and dive right into the first section on how to paint the minions. All right, we're going to start off with some Seraphim Sepia. This is actually cheaper than using the contrast color Skeleton Horde. If you haven't seen my video, go ahead and click here, making a comparison between the washes. And so if you have Skeleton Horde, feel free to do that. But we're going to do the bodies of all three minions like this. And then I'm going to use an old beaten up brush that has sort of split hairs like this because it's gonna help me spottle this Grunta fur. And first I'm gonna put it on these biters, just their heads. And then along the back edges, I'm going to uh, splatter the paint like this, just dabbing it on a little bit, just to get specks along the edges. And then I'll go back and uh, put a full coat in the middle so that it sort of goes out with these speckles getting some contrast uh, wildwood to darken up the front of the head. And then again, I'm gonna speckle it just a little bit with some spots along the top of the head. And then again, along the back. And this time only putting the wildwood right in the center and then speckling out onto the Gorgrunta fur. And that gives this nice insect-like, cockroach-like color. I'm gonna grab some black and I always use cheap craft paint for black and white. And I'm gonna do the claws of the biters. Here's some Flesh Terrors Red and I'm gonna be coloring in the mouth. So along both the inside and the outside so that all the teeth is more than covered up because the white is going to contrast against the red. So when I put in the teeth like this, there's plenty of red around the outside of the mouth to contrast against the white teeth. I'm going to grab some black Templar and start on these. And make sure you get the teeth as well as the eye. I actually don't know if that's the eye or not. I couldn't really tell if it even has an eye. But again, I'm splotching it on with my bad brush here just to get those specks. 
and it sort of fades out from the dark pot parts along the top. Next, just grab any kind of blue, a little bit darker, and color in the eyes. And then mix some white in to lighten it up. And then go into the center of the eye and put a dot on the eye, just like that. Next, grab some pure white after you clean off your brush and color in the teeth. Here I'm grabbing some Verde Jade and you can grab any sort of brighter color and all I do is just the spine. And then the eyes as well. And inside the barrel of these guns. I'm gonna grab Mago's Purple, although it ended up being a little bit lighter than I wanted. So you might wanna pick a different color like Volupus pink or something like that. Um, but I thought the brain sort of, it looks like a brain color. And you're just going to color in sort of across the back and the top of the shoulders. So that it fades out into that tan wash. Go ahead and grab some silver. I have plate mail metal from Army Painter, but any silver will work, and color in the guns. Grab some Nuln Oil, and go over the silver after it's dry, just to shade it in. Here I'm grabbing some zinc, which is a dark gray, just to do the bases. And because the bases are spray painted white, I did have to put three coats of this on in order to get full coverage. And here you have the three finished alien minions. And like I said, I think it goes really fast. And I like how I have really distinct colors for the three, so there's no chance of mixing it up. All right, on to the heroes. We're gonna put Gilliman Flesh, which is my go-to flesh color. You can also use Army Painter Flesh Wash for a lighter shade. And here, I'm just putting it on the face, controlling how much goes on there. Also, you can use Wildwood to have a darker color. Next, I'm gonna use Space Wolves Gray for the pants. And it's a relatively light color. Obviously, you can choose whatever colors you want. Again, I'm going to go back to my silver and color in the bandolier with all the bullets, as well as these knee pads and the gun. I'm going to grab my Volupus Pink to do his shorts and some of the strapping. Militarum Green is going to go on his boots, the top part, as well as the front. And then I'm going to put it on the, over the gun as well. Grab some Wildwood and do some of the strapping. I think these are holsters, not 100% sure. I'm using Ayandan Yellow for his hair. Snakebite Leather is gonna go over the silver bullets and I like how it really makes it look coppery whenever you put it over silver. And so instead of actually using a copper color, I actually put it over the silver. Grab some Black Templar and go over the silver on the kneecaps, as well as over the top of the boots and some of the banding.
Here I did an experiment with another hero where I first spray painted it black and instead of doing sort of zenithal highlighting with an airbrush, I'm just using a regular brush just to put on white over the black. And the reason why I like this better than using an airbrush is when you use an airbrush, you actually fill in a lot of the lines and this keeps the black lines in play. So I wanted to see how this looked different than using contrast colors over regular uh, white. So here I'm just putting on red and it goes on pretty well over the white obviously but maintaining the black lines. So here's the difference between the two because some people have complained that contrast colors is more watery and not enough contrast and what you see with the figure on the left is you retain some of the black lines by using this method so feel free to do that i'm going to stick with contrast colors just because it's so fast we're going to go ahead and do this scorpion boss and i'm just using snakebite leather and i sort of fade out along the legs because i'm going to change colors there here's blood angels red and this is where the two-tone nature uh, comes in. The snake bite leather is still a little bit wet, so it's easier to blend in between those two colors. So what I'm doing is just creating a softer blend between the snake bite leather and the Blood Angels Red. So I'm putting one coat of that on first, and then what I do is go back and grab some Blood Angels Red, a stronger tone, and just put it along the bottoms. Here's Black Templar where I'm gonna dot some of the spines on his back as well as darken in his eyes. And this again just provides a little bit of black lining to highlight and bring about contrast. With just my heroes, I'm gonna base them so that they stand out a little bit more and I use super glue and some hobby gravel for model railroads. And I use a toothpick to move the super glue around in a random fashion because I'm going to put static grass on the other part. So this part is just to get the gravel on there. And I know some people will paint the gravel, but again, for speed's sake, I don't. I just put it on like this with super glue after I painted the whole model. And at this phase, what I'm gonna do is varnish it. And I used to use Tester's Dull Coat, but I found actually something that works better. And that is this Dead Flat from Rust-Oleum. And then also I'm gonna use Mod Podge to um, put it over places that I want to be glossy and it's perfect on these tentacles on this boss. I'm gonna use regular Elmer's glue to put on the static grass after the varnish is dry. And I move it around with a toothpick to just fill in all of the spots. And the reason why I use Elmer's glue for static grass is because uh, if you use super glue for static grass, it will make it shiny and absorb into the static grass. So Elmer's glue is actually better. And this just makes the heroes a little bit uh, more noticeable on the board, it makes them stand out a little bit more. Here are some tufts that I'm gonna use. And here I use super glue to glue them down, although you could use Elmer's if you wanted to. And just using a pair of uh, tweezers, I just press it down onto the super glue. And that's pretty much it. So here's what the heroes and the boss monsters look like. Again, the contrast colors makes it come out very fast and it is my go-to method for painting when I have a lot of miniatures to paint. So in this final section, we're gonna go ahead and do the terrain. Here is ultra matte slate gray, any dark gray will work. And I just spray paint it. If you don't have dark gray, just use black. I don't think it matters too much. 
But here in printing out, you can see I didn't use supports and there's a couple of droops happening, but I don't care. I'm using Williamsburg Blue or any, you can just use any kind of gray or even mix in gray if you don't have Williamsburg Blue. And usually for terrain, I don't use miniature paints, I just use craft paint. And here, it isn't dry brushing per se, because my brush is a little bit wet and I do have quite a bit of paint on my brush because I want to get more coverage than a regular dry brush would do. And so what I'm doing is just maintaining the black lines in the crevices and just using the gray over top. Here's slate gray, which is a lighter gray. And I don't know if you can tell from the video, but this is dry brushing, so I'm hitting the highlights with the lighter gray. It's a little hard to tell here in the video, but uh, what, that, what this does is just brings out the edges a little bit more. Now I'm gonna use a lighter silver and just start painting some random squares that are on the ship. And again, we're doing the same method to all the other ship parts. I'm just showing you the centerpiece here. So just pick out whatever shapes you want and you can highlight it or paint it silver. And then do the same with a highlight color. I'm using Canyon Orange and I'm just picking random spots just to put on color. You can use any color that you want, a yellow, red, green, or blue, any, any bright color. And be sparse with it though. Here I'm using gray sky, which is the lightest gray I have. And the reason why I don't use white on these numbers is I don't want it to stand out absolutely. Um, and the contrast might be a little bit too harsh. And that's why I'm using a light gray instead of a white. But you can use white if you want. It'll just make your numbers stand out a little bit more. And with the nines and six, I put a dot underneath just so that Everyone knows uh, that this is a nine rather than a six. For the grass, I start off with camouflage Rust-Oleum, the deep forest green. I spray paint the whole thing and then I highlight on top with this satin spring grass and it creates this two-tone effect where the shadows are dark green and the top is this lighter green. Grab any kind of just brighter green and start on top and put on a somewhat thick coat along the top. You don't want to get into the crevices because you want to maintain that darker green. And then I grab a really light green. This is apple orchard, almost a fluorescent green. And here I am highlighting or dry brushing just to bring it out a little bit more. And then to finish it off, I use the same gray, light gray, to do the numbers. So here it is all together for this wreck. You can use pieces from the other side if you don't want to print out separate bushes like I did here with none of the numbers on them. And I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Again, links in the descriptions below and you can download it and print it yourself. And then here's the other side of the board. Colin promised to make some walls, so I didn't make any walls. But I think this terrain turned out really well. You want to use poster tack to keep it down on the board because in the frenzy of moving everything around, people do bump the terrain. So just a little bit of poster tack will keep it on the terrain. And this is what the board looks like. I think it looks amazing. I think having the terrain just creates better immersion and the painted miniatures always looks awesome. Really happy with how it turned out. So there you have it. Hopefully that tutorial was helpful for you. Please like and subscribe and again check out my Patreon page. So I hope you're having fun with your copy of Project Elite. So happy gaming and we'll see you next time.